Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for joining and uh, welcome for this session also. We are thankful that uh, God is allowing us to share his word. Uh, today I would like to read from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I will read only two verses, verse 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. The Bible says, What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Uh, last time as we shared the word of God, uh, we spoke about John chapter 15, especially verse 7, which says, uh, Abide in me and uh, my word in you, then ask whatever you will, and it shall be given unto you. Uh, today, I uh, read this verse also. So when we spoke last time, uh, we saw how we can abide in Christ or how we can be united with Christ. So how are we united with Christ? Through faith in his death and resurrection. Anybody who has that faith uh, in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is one with the Lord. So here the Bible also says, one who is joined to an harlot is one body with a harlot. So also, the one who is joined with Christ is one body with Christ. So I want uh, to us to check some few things. Uh, yes, there is our life before we are joined with Christ, and then there is also our life after we have been joined with Christ. So we need to check about these two uh, things. <coughs> Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible says like this. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, And you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. So, number one, we need to know that through Adam, we became dead in trespasses and in our sins. Now, if you come to verse 12, the Bible says, Ephesians 2, 12, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. So this is our true position and true image before we met Christ. So before we met Christ... <coughs> We were dead in sins and trespasses. We were dead people. Before we met Christ, the Bible says we were without him. Meaning, we were outside him. We were not together with him. We were not joined together with him. Then the Bible also says we were aliens from the covenant of, uh, from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenant of promise having no hope, and without Christ in the world. So that is how we were. Uh, we were such miserable people. In other words, uh, when you want to understand this clearly, let's check the book of Romans chapter 11. <coughs> in Romans chapter 11, uh, especially uh, verse number 24, the Bible says, For if thou were if, you, if thou were cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature and were grafted contrary to the nature into good olive tree, how much more shall these which be of natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? So what does the Bible say here? Uh, we the Gentiles, we were branches of a wild olive. That's why the Bible says we were dead in trespasses. That's why the Bible says we were aliens, strangers of the commonwealth, from the commonwealth of the Israel. We were without promise, without God, and without hope. So that is our true image before meeting with Christ. But now, uh, what does the Bible say? Paul says here, we 
were grafted contrary to the nature. Okay, we are branches of the wild olive. But now, the Bible says here, we are grafted in the true olive. And now Paul says, us being taken from the wild olive and being grafted on the true olive is contrary to the nature. Then what does it mean? It means nature says otherwise. How? Nature says uh, we should take good olive and graft on the bad olive. That is nature. Because here the Bible says we were branches of wild olive, but now we are grafted contrary to the nature to the true olive. So from that time, when we were grafted from the wild olive into true olive, then we became one body with the true olive. Now, if you check verse, 50, verse, uh, verse 16, Romans chapter 11, verse 16, the Bible says, For if the first fruit be holy, the lamp is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay, naturally, we are aliens. Naturally, we are strangers. Naturally, we are people who are dead in sin and trespasses. That is our true image. Now, what happened? At that time, uh, we were cut off from the wild olive and were grafted into true olive. What does it mean being grafted in? We became part of the true olive. So when we became part of the true olive, we became one body with the true olive. Now, what does the Bible say? Now, if the roots, the first fruit be holy, so are the branches. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. So, we are not holy because we did something or we were holy from the beginning. No. But the point of grafting, when we became one with the true olive, when we become, became one with the roots of the first fruit. Now, who is the first fruit? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15. <coughs> uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 20. The Bible says, but now Christ is risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. So who is the first fruit? Jesus Christ, the true olive. He is the first fruit. Now the Bible says, if the first fruit be holy, so is the lamb. If the root be holy, so is the branch. So are the branches. So why are the branches holy? The branches are not holy because they are supposed to be holy, but because they are connected to a holy root. So why do we say we are holy? Or what makes us holy? It is the grafting to the root of the true olive that makes us holy. So where do we draw our holiness from? We don't have any holiness by ourselves. Our holiness is Jesus' holiness. Our righteousness is Jesus' righteousness. We have put on Christ. And now because we have put on Christ, just as Christ is holy, so we are holy. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4 verse 17, the Bible says like this. 1 John chapter 4 verse 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. As Christ he is, so are we in this world. Okay, what am I explaining? Last time we talked about being inside the Lord, abiding with Jesus. What does it mean? Believing in his death and his resurrection. That makes us one with him. Uh, because as many as believed in him, he gave them power to become sons. How are we made sons? When we believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So from that point, we became one with Christ Jesus. Now when we became one with Christ Jesus, we are people who became one body with Jesus Christ. We became new creatures. Even though we were strangers, now we are no more strangers. Let's go back to Ephesians and wind up. Ephesians chapter, chapter 2 
Okay, in chapter 2, verse 12, we saw our true image. Aliens, uh, strangers, without promise, without covenant, without God, without hope. But now verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who are sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. Now we were far off. We were very far from Christ. We were very far from God. Why? Because of the act of disobedience of Adam, we were separated from God. But now what is the act of obedience of Jesus Christ doing? Reconciling us, bringing us back to Jesus, to God. Now, God has brought us to be together with him through Jesus Christ. Now, we are made nigh to him by the blood of Jesus. Now, verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says, Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saint and of the household of God. Now, we are not strangers anymore. We are fellow citizens. We are one body with the Jesus Christ. We are made new creatures. We are one with Christ Jesus. That is why uh, uh, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter, 5, chapter five, chapter five, verse seventeen, the Bible says, "Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature." Old are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now, when one be with the Lord, when one be inside Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are past. What are the old things? Being hopeless, having no God, having strangers, being aliens. All these things are gone away. Now behold, we have been made new creatures. What, is it, what does it mean to be new creatures? New creatures means having one heart with Jesus Christ. Having one heart with the Lord. The Bible says where we read in, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 6 verse 6, 17, the Bible says like this. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So when we believe in the works of Jesus Christ, when we believe in the works of the cross, we become one spirit with the Lord. We become one body with Jesus Christ. We become saints. We are people who are no more sinners, but we have become saints and joint heirs together with Christ Jesus. So being inside Jesus Christ means believing the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this also helps us to be one with him. Now from that time, we are no more strangers. We are fellow citizens. We are joint heirs. We are adopted sons of God. We are one with Jesus Christ. That is why uh, we need to check continually whether we are in or we are out. Those who are in are one body with Christ, one spirit with Christ. They are new being. As Jesus is, so are we. So that is our joy. That is our hope. That is everything unto us. So I hope uh, you can always check with yourself whether you are in or you are out. If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you believe accurately in his death and resurrection, you become one with him. Now when you become one with him, then you are fellow citizen. You are no longer a stranger. You have hope. You are not somebody who is looking for hope. Uh, you, uh, you have uh, faith in him. Now, having faith in him is everything for us. So I hope as we continually listen to the word, we are able to unite our heart with the heart of Jesus Christ, and we are able to gain hope inside our heart, be able to be together with him in this world, and also the life after this world. Thank you for always uh, listening, and uh, I hope we will continue sharing more, and uh, I hope that through this word, you are able to uh, change uh, your perspective on what the scripture says, and are uh, you able to have faith and uh, have joy and peace inside your heart. Thank you for listening. I hope to meet you next time.